Eagles, your daily Philadelphia Eagles podcast, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Welcome on in, everybody, to another edition of the Locked On Eagles podcast, your first listen of each and every day, brought to you by the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. As always, I am Gino Camilleri, and this show is brought to you by our friends over at McDonald's. McDonald's proudly has been serving community since 1965. It has always been more than just a place to get tasty, affordable food. It is an unofficial community center. A big thank you to our friends at McDonald's for always being there. McDonald's, I'm loving it. As we move closer to Sunday when the Philadelphia Eagles take on the Las Vegas, not Oakland, Las Vegas Raiders. Let's make sure we get that right. I'm sure I'll make that mistake a few times throughout this show. But in an event that only happens once every four years in the NFL when the Eagles take on the AFC West. They will be taking on the Las Vegas Raiders, one of the first teams, the second team in that division that they're playing. They suffered a hand, a loss at the hands of the Kansas City Chiefs earlier in the season, but now the season starts to turn around for the better for the Eagles, in my opinion. Today, it just came out that the Eagles, for the remaining of the season, have the easiest strength of schedule in the NFL. So when we look at this, what does that mean? And starting with the Raiders, you are going to have a better chance to evaluate your ball club because you saw what it took to beat the best teams in the league, the Tampas, the Dallas, the Kansas Cities. Now can you beat those teams that I would say next year where you'll probably be a little bit closer to that middle ground of the NFL? Can you assert yourself into these games? And I think going against the Raiders will be a great matchup to do so. And we will be back talking about the Raiders after our first look today. Tomorrow, as we get into the crossover Thursday edition of the show with the host of the Las Vegas Raiders, your boy Q, I and him will be bringing you that show tomorrow and the fourth show of the week. And as always, we have you covered here on the Locked On Eagles podcast. So let's get into things. Let's start talking about the Las Vegas Raiders. But before we do that, let's talk about some Eagles news that came here through the wire within the last couple hours. Officially, the Eagles site put out on Twitter that they have signed Richard Rodgers to the practice squad and released Casey Tucker from their practice squad. The reason they added Richard Rodgers was because they opened up the 21-day practice window for Tyree Jackson as well as Kevon Wallace. Now that those two have been activated in that practice window on the IR, they can play here within the next 21 days now that that window is open. So to see that tight end position and how much it has changed simply in a week since trading Zach Ertz, There is a whole new group to evaluate there. You're going to have a young Tyree Jackson who this team really spoke highly of prior to this season. And there was talks that they were willing to move Zach Ertz or Dallas Goddard because they had confidence in that second tight end in Tyree Jackson, a player who is a converted quarterback from the University of Buffalo. Instead of taking his fifth year and going to a Power 5 school, like in Auburn, for example, which had high interest in Tyree Jackson. He entered the NFL as a quarterback for the Buffalo Bills as an undrafted free agent. And much like a lot of players that have had this transformation, just like Jordan Matthews did where he went from wide receiver to tight end, Tyree Jackson made a similar move going from quarterback to tight end. But the thing about Tyree Jackson is he's a player who's six foot seven. He has a wingspan for days and he's still learning the position, but is already a matchup nightmare. You saw that in the first few preseason games that the Eagles played with Tyree Jackson. He was a player that they had all intents and purposes of getting involved in the game plan early on in the season. But We know that the injury bug can strike at any minute, and he ended up on the injured reserve. 
as well as Kevon Wallace, who opened up that practice window again today. And looking at the safety position, you really need Kevon Wallace because maybe a team calls on Rodney McLeod or Anthony Harris and they make you a deal that you can't resist. You are going to need Kevon Wallace and Marcus Epps to continue to step up in that safety realm and Going into next season, I would put safety as one of the two biggest needs on this team outside of linebacker. So now it is time for Kavon Wallace, a player who has been in and out of the lineup due to injuries, to really cement himself into this roster discussion. And I brought this up yesterday on the show when I was taking a look at the roster. One of those question marks I had was at the safety position due to the availability of Kavon Wallace. With the way Marcus Epps has been playing, I believe he has garnered snaps in the rest of the season and potentially earned him way, his way onto the roster for next year. But looking at this team, now going into this schedule where you're playing the Raiders, you're going to be playing the Lions, you're going to play the Broncos in a few weeks, then down the stretch you're playing your division, we're going to see this evaluation process play out right in front of our eyes. And I think we've gotten a good look at it so far early on in the season for what they have to get to, that marker of where they need to be to be an elite team. But now, are you on track in your rebuild against a team like the Raiders, I would say, who is built in a similar fashion to you in terms of wide receivers, in terms of their running game, in terms of their want to get better at the offensive line position on the back end of the ball on defense. They have guys that can fly around. They are a little weak at corner right now. They have had the injury bug bite them as well. So you're going into a game against a Raiders team that has to get back on track in this division and an Eagles team that has to get back on track in terms of evaluating their roster. So that can make out and have a result that is surprising to some people. I wouldn't be shocked if the Philadelphia Eagles came out and won this football game on Sunday. Here in the Camilleri household, I mean, my dad is back in New York, but my dad is a longtime Raiders fan. Him and all his buddies growing up, they loved watching the Raiders. So this is one of those games that holds a little bit higher place in my heart than rest uh, than most of the AFC matchups that we get to see every four years. So the Eagles are taking on the Raiders for the first time in Las Vegas. They get to play in front of a large crowd in front of that new dome stadium. I think it's going to be a fun game. You might want to turn it on Sunday NFL ticket for those who don't have access to watching your team at that time. I believe that the Eagles and the Raiders will be a fun game to watch come Sunday. And we will continue to talk about this first look at this Raiders team before we get into the crossover show tomorrow with host of the Raiders Locked On podcast, your boy Q. But before we continue our discussion on the Las Vegas Raiders, we have a message from our friends over at Upside. Hey, Eagles fans. You know it's Gino Camilleri, and there's this incredible app. Let me tell you, this thing is unbelievable. My listeners get 25 cents for every gallon of gas every time they fill up. Just download the free Get Upside app in the App Store or Google Play right now using the promo code TOUCHDOWN, that's T-O-U-C-H-D-O-W-N. You'll get a bonus 25 cents per gallon on your first fill up. That's 50 cents cash back on your first fill up. My fiance, she travels 40 minutes back and forth from work. She is racking up the cash from Get Upside. Don't pay full price anymore at the pump. Make sure you use Get Upside. Just download the app. Enter the promo code TOUCHDOWN, get 50 cents on your first gallon, and cash back on your first tank. Some people who drive a lot will make two to $300 a month. I mean, you're turning down free money at this side. Just go and get upside, and you will have a fantastic time at the end of the month when you have all of your gas covered for the following month due to get upside. You can get it back in your bank account. PayPal or an Eve gift card for Amazon and other brands that they have. So just download the Get Upside app using the promo code Touchdown today. All right, everybody, welcome on back to this edition of the Locked On Eagles podcast, your first listen of every single day. We are continuing our first look at the Las Vegas Raiders as the Eagles will be traveling to Las Vegas to play indoors against the Raiders in a place that I was just at in June. It was 110 degrees when I was there. It will be cooler, but now that they have a dome stadium to play in, it is one of those environments that is a spectacle. Tickets were 
astronomical this year. I know the Eagles fans love to travel well. They're one of the, I would say, top three teams that travels well with their with their organization. I would say the, the Bills are right up there. The Raiders travel well, and I would put probably the Browns. Browns fans are crazy, and they like to travel as well. But the Eagles fans are the best. We always know that. And the Eagles will be taking on the Las Vegas Raiders, who I would say are very similar in terms of makeup to the Philadelphia Eagles. I just took a look at early on where they stand in terms of scoring defense, scoring offense in terms of rush yards and pass yards allowed and how many they have gotten. The Raiders currently, their scoring defense is 16, averaging 24 points a game allowed, passing their 10th averaging 222.7 yards a game, and then rushing their 25th at 130.7. In terms of their offense, their scoring offense is 13th, averaging 24.5 points per game. Their passing offense is third at 305 yards a game, and their rushing offense is 29th at 79.8 yards per game. So looking at those numbers, I know numbers don't really paint a big picture, but it can help you look in from a 30,000-foot view of what, what the task at hand could be when you take on the Las Vegas Raiders. And I'm looking at it right now, and those numbers line up very, very well with how the Eagles play. And it also opens up the possibility that you might see a bit more from the Eagles' rush game in this performance. So let's start talking about the Eagles offense going against a Raiders defense that they're middle of the road when it comes to protecting the pass. And they have a defense that allows a boatload of yards per game on the ground. And I, excuse me, not middle of the road. They're at the top of the pack here with the Eagles in terms of their scoring defense. They're in the top 10 four passing yards allowed. The Eagles offense has three young wide receivers that have to get on track after their performance last week. Quez Watkins, Devontae Smith, Jalen Rager. You're not playing the caliber of team that you were playing in Tampa, even down to their, what, sixth or seventh cornerback that they had in play. They still had a front that was able to get to the quarterback and put pressure on him which made things a little wishy-washy. And Jalen Hurts said today in his press conference that, quote, we don't see what he sees on the field. I'll tell you this much. When you're going up against Oakland, who they've gotten better in terms of protecting the pass, but they still don't have world beaters in that dimension. I mean, their best safety right now is a guy in Jonathan Abram who is probably better off suited playing linebacker. They have high quality in terms of their linebacker play. They continue to add to that. Denzel Perryman is playing off the charts for the Raiders. And then their defensive front, Max Crosby might be playing the best football for an edge rusher across the league. So when you look at it, if they're going to get pressure from the edge, if they're good against the pass, but yet they're susceptible to the run, how do you beat them? I think that short passing game is something that is going to be on full display this week. Miles Sanders, I would say, probably look to see that he gets 16 to 17 touches in this game, probably 12 to 13 on the ground. Same with Kenneth Gainwell. I'd give him six to seven touches on the ground because a team that is allowing 130 yards on the ground per game, that's at the bottom of the league. If you can't run against that unit, then we have to start talking about if Nick Sirianni really does have a play calling issue. Because we knew last week going against Tampa, they're one of the best run defenses in the league. It would be asinine to put a square peg in a round hole and try and run the football because they stacked the box. They had seven and eight man boxes for a majority of the game, waited for Jalen Hurts to beat him with his arm, and he never really did. But now with the Raiders, I believe there will be plays there with your arm. There will be plays there in the rush game. And Jalen Hurts could have the potential to lead this team in rushing once again because if the Raiders can't play sound fundamental football to contain the run and they can't hold the edge, Jalen Hurts is a guy that will make you pay, as well as Miles Sanders, as well as Kenny Gainwell. And I believe it was on the Monday Night Football broadcast the other night 
where I think it was Lewis Riddick said that, how do you help out your running backs when you can't get them going? You get, you get them in the short passing game. And the Eagles can do that. And they have two running backs that excel in that department. And yes, they might not rush for 130 yards, but I believe that if they get touches within three yards of the line of scrimmage, their running backs could be the most successful unit in this game. And tomorrow when we talk to your boy Q, I'll be interested to hear what he has to say about that Raiders run game. But just that first glance, I think it's a very fair matchup between the Eagles offense and the Raiders defense. Two units that middle of the pack, when you look at the average, they do one thing better than they do the other. The strength of the Raiders offense is protecting the pass. The strength of the Eagles offense is throwing the ball. The, the weakness of the Eagles offense is getting their running back touches in the run game, and that's the weakness of the Raiders offense. So we will see a true coaching matchup here. Who can out-scheme their colleague across the board? Who can do it? I believe the Eagles can come out victorious in terms of their offense. 24.5 points allowed per game from the Raiders. The Eagles have succeeded that mark multiple times this season, and I could see that happening once again, when they take on the Las Vegas Raiders this coming Sunday. And we will finish up the show talking about the Eagles defense and how they match up against a Derek Carr-led offense that has some players that match up similarly to what the Eagles have on their offense. But before we talk about that to finish up the show, we have a message from our friends over at McDonald's. The Lockdown Eagles podcast is always brought to you by McDonald's, proudly serving communities since 1965. It is a place that always has been more than just a place to get tasty, affordable food. It is a place where friends and families come to reconnect, a place where classmates can meet up for a study group, knowing they'll have dependable Wi-Fi and endless supplies of French fries and McFlurries. Me and my friends, after every lacrosse practice back in high school, we would go get a shamrock shake when the season presented itself, and we would always talk about the practice or the game that happened that day. Win or lose, it's a place where teammates, competitors can come to recharge. It is a place where you always look forward to stopping on a long road trip to rest your legs and refuel. Myself, I go get McDonald's at least twice a week. I think it is the best of the big three, those spicy McChicken bundles. Whoo! I love those, man. A little bit of heat, bunch of crunch. They taste delicious, and they're cheap. So why don't you go there? If you got a, a game that you're bringing your child to, if you just went to an Eagles-Raiders game and you want something quick, go to McDonald's. And did you ever know somebody that worked at McDonald's? Because I know plenty of them. They are always giving back to the community. They're always employing people, one of the biggest franchises in the world. So you heard that McDonald's is the place to refuel and connect. Did somebody say Lockdown Eagles watch party there? McDonald's, I'm loving it. The show is also also brought to you by Built Bar. If you haven't tried Built Bar by now, you are missing out. They say it's a protein bar, but it does not taste like one. It seriously is just a candy bar, in my opinion. You have to try these amazing bars yourself to believe it. Most protein bars are chalky or waxy and just plain hard to choke down. Built Bar is soft, covered in 100% real chocolate, and when you bite into it, you're eating something different. It's more than an experience that you'll enjoy. In fact, we swear you're eating a candy bar. Let me tell you, the ones that they just got, those coconut brownie bites, they blow a said certain candy bar that happened to be a certain Yankee back in the day, Baby Ruth, as some might say, blows it out of the water. It's not even comparable. Built Bars are low in carb, low calorie, low fat, low sugar, and high in protein. So all your health benefits on top of it being purely delicious. And there's so many flavors. Another great thing about Built Bar is that you can choose any of their mouth-watering flavors that they have. Raspberry, mint, brownie, coconut almond, salted caramel, double chocolate, cherry, barcia, and the limited flavors that come out three to four times a month that are only on the market every three to four days. Go to BuiltBar.com today and use the promo code LOCK15 and you'll get 15% off your order. Use your promo code LOCK15 at built.com. All right, everybody. Gino Camilleri from the Locked On Eagles podcast here to finish up this Wednesday edition of the show, taking our first look at the Las Vegas Raiders and where they stand just in terms of offense and defense going against this Eagles team. We will get a more in-depth discussion on it tomorrow when we do our crossover Thursday with your boy Q, who also hosts 
the Locked On Bet Show, which should be your second listen of every day after the Locked On Eagles podcast. So to finish up the show, we're going to talk about the Raiders defense or Raiders offense, excuse me, going against the Eagles defense. So as I had mentioned in the prior segment, the Raiders are sitting at 24.5 points per game, third in passing at 305 yards a game and rushing their 29th at 79.8 yards a game. Once again, it seems like these numbers are matching up well with what the Eagles do well on defense. They're one of the top passing defenses in the league. Darius Slay is having an all-world season. Avante Maddox is playing like the player he should in his fourth year in the NFL. Steven Nelson has gotten better over the last couple weeks, but really the safety play has elevated this team here in the last few weeks. They've been able to move to a cover three look at times. They've been able to play more man now that they have Rodney McLeod back there. They have Anthony Harris playing better. Kavon Wallace will be coming back there. I look at this Raiders offense and I say you have Henry Ruggs, who really is similar to Quez Watkins. You have a Brian Edwards, who is a guy who does everything well. He's a good route runner, and he's a, a bigger player who would probably be on par with Devontae Smith minus his build, which is like 30 to 40 pounds heavier than him. And then they have a, a Hunter Renfro who excels in the slot, somebody that you look at him, you're like, oh, this guy's a football player, and he makes plays all over the field, special teams, at the wide receiver position, he's, a, I would say, a young Cole Beasley when it comes to his route running and his productivity. And that kind of matches up with what the Eagles have, in my opinion. Like You have speed, you have route runners, you have size. Oh, and not to mention Darren Waller on the other side there as well as one of the best tight ends in football. It's going to be a tough ask to defend this Raiders team, but the Eagles did a great job last week holding the Buccaneers wide receivers and a Big player in Mike Evans, who is a similar body size and skill set to Darren Waller. If they can kind of take that plan, which they did last week, and implement it this week and hold this Raiders passing game in check, I believe they can succeed to stop the run because the Raiders, their offensive line, though they are trying to improve, is still finding its footing in, in terms of the run game. They're still trying to figure out their pass pro at times. Josh Jacobs does not look like the back he has looked like in the past few years. He looks a little dinged up. We'll see what your boy Q has to say about that tomorrow. But the Eagles defense in a game where they need to follow up a better rushing defense performance where they let Leonard Fournette run crazy last week, this is the game where you get your feet under you. You could hold the Raiders to under 100 yards, and then you could play more in coverage. You could play 6-7 on the back end, defend the bigger weapons that the Raiders have. Derek Carr is a guy who likes to let the ball fly. He allows his guys to go up and make plays in 50-50 situations. I think this game sets up to be a very equal matchup for both of these teams. The record might not say it, but I believe personnel-wise, these teams are very close and much closer than the record says. They're playing in a great division in the AFC West. We are going to have to see the rest of the AFC West here along the season. But we'll see where we stand in terms of this middle-of-the-pack group in the NFL when the Eagles take on the Las Vegas Raiders here in a few short days. So that'll do us here on this first look edition of the show. Gino Camilleri, as always, joining you here on the Lockdown Eagles podcast, which is your first listen of every day. And for your second listen, make sure you go check out the Peacock and Williamson show where Matt Williamson and Brian Peacock will give you 30-minute analysis all over the NFL five days a week. They are the best at what they do in this field, and we're the best at what we do here at the Locked On Eagles podcast, bringing you five shows a week, bringing you the best sponsors, and I would say we have the best group of hosts of any podcast network that is out there. You can find our Twitter account and follow us along at Locked On Birds. Find myself, for those on YouTube, you see it here on the screen, but for our audio listeners, it's at GC24 underscore football. You can find our co-host at at DBiase, L-O-E. You could find the show on Odyssey, Spotify, Stitcher, SoundCloud, anywhere where you get your podcasts. Find us on YouTube. Every single day we are posting the video portion of our shows, as well as written content that Lou is putting out over at our friends at Fox 43 in Harrisburg, 
PA. Make sure you check out all the great work that we do because it comes down to the fans making us as good as we are. Without all of our fans, we are nothing. And that's why we love the Lockdown Eagles podcast and the Lockdown Podcast Network, your team every day, bringing you five shows every single week with your local hosts. I'm Gino Camilleri signing off. As always, fly, Eagles, fly.